So this is going to be part three of my discussion on collecting figures, particularly high-end figures, Japanese robots. Um, and I, I just forgot about this one. I, I didn't, in, I, I would have put it in part two, but I just forgot a couple things. Um, so I'll just start by saying a, a few more th expenses to take care of before you start considering yourself at the level of disposable income, at least for me, um, paying down my mortgage, that is a priority, uh, and putting aside money for my kids' um, college education. So uh, definitely, I don't know, if you're a single, if you're single and, and have no kids, then your situation is different. Uh, now, I did not really start collecting these higher-end figures until I was in my uh, mid to late 40s. So um, if you're in your 20s and 30s and you have that kind of disposable income, um, then that's awesome. I did not have that um, when I was that age. So I'm kind of scratching that itch I had when I was a child of wanting certain uh, robots that I simply could not afford. But I think that you need to look at where you, you are situationally in life. And, and one of the things that I think about is moving. And what does it take to move all of this stuff and things like this box? Uh, I live in what I'm hoping is my retirement home. So I'm not that concerned about it, but it is something I think about, uh, which is just the the effort of moving. Um, I would also say that if you're in a situation where your basement is full or you're starting to use your uh, your uh, garage for storing stuff like this, then maybe you're overdoing it. Uh, you need to definitely figure out what you can collect based on the size of your house. Um, so definitely, if you're a person who... Uh, moves a lot or you're planning on moving or you know you're definitely not in your final home, you might want to kind of stay a little bit more light with your stuff. And that includes pretty much any kind of collectible uh, or accumulation of, of things. Uh, and then we have the final stage of it is, uh, what do you want to do with these figures when you're approaching the end or you're getting quite elderly? Um, you want to pass them on? Do you have anybody who wants them? Um, is, is your collection going to be a burden for someone? Are you going to come to the point where you want to start selling these? Uh, and, and that's something to definitely think about is that every figure you buy could possibly be passed on to someone who maybe doesn't particularly want it, or they're going to either you know, imagine buying a figure for three, four hundred dollars and then having someone give it away at a at a goodwill or something like that because they have no idea the value or they don't care or they don't feel like going to the effort of selling it. So I think that's something that people need to look at. And I suspect that for people who are into, for instance, video game collecting, and, and I've seen so many videos of people who were all in on it and just ran out of steam and, and sold everything is, uh, just the accumulation of stuff. And, uh, they didn't want to pass it on. You know, most of the time these people aren't even that old, but just having all of that stuff becomes, becomes a problem. So those are the other, uh, few things I wanted to talk about. Uh, like I said, um, moving, and uh, what do you want, what do you expect to happen to your figures after you're gone? Or do you not care because you're gone? <laughs> it may not matter to you. So that will hopefully end my, this part three will hopefully end uh, the discussion, but I probably will revisit it maybe in a, a year or two with uh, maybe more uh, re revelations on my part.